What's happening, guys? Matt, Cichler Dojo, here with another monthly fish room update. This is for March 2024. I uh, didn't have one for last month, but uh, getting it to it now, kind of doing an every other month thing. And uh, in all these videos, I try to talk about what's new, projects, what fish are available. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to answer them in the, in the video or ask them. And uh, we'll get right in. So here's where we usually start. Uh, and uh, I have a 150 gallon tank, and this is the Carpentis pair. Very loyal and uh, been here quite a while. About a four or five year old pair at this point female right there and then uh, of course the big guy the big male doing really good and a really small batch of fry that I captured I think part of it has to do with this pot and the size I think he's having trouble fitting in there and so he's not able to do his job very well so I think I'm gonna have to get one of those large pots like I have with the big wild caught fest day and uh, allow them to do more breeding here not that I need it, I have quite a bit of fry right now but uh, these guys are doing really well and uh, we'll go over to the other side I did have a group of like six or seven of their kids here and now we only have two, I have been moving those uh, these two, I think, are in the range of about three and a half to maybe four inches. Uh, they're available. Let me know if you're interested. Not positive on sex, but they've been doing pretty good here. Um, across from their parents. So, I'll have a ton of different sizes available right now. Um, these would be the biggest two right here. And then uh, down below, I won't go get a light here, but you can see the fish. Uh, these are, I think I'm saying an inch and a half to two inches available, and they'll come out of this group. So message me if you're interested. And then uh, we'll move a little bit to the left here. Uh, this 120 has the wild caught true green tares. Indiana car stalls very high. And, uh, you know, like always, most of the time with the garage, they don't really come out too much. A little shy. I'm gonna try to find a big guy. I think that's the big female in the back. Oh, there's the big guy. There's the big guy right there. Um, they're doing really good and uh, really enjoying them, even though I've had them uh, available. If they're gonna go anywhere, they're gonna go to the right person, keeping them. Not too many wild cuts in the hobby that I'm aware of. And uh, especially this male, go see some of the other videos. This guy's it's an absolute beast. And uh, they used to breed pretty consistently, him and uh, his female, which is right here, I believe. Uh, and I haven't really been checking out the fry situation in here. Uh, I don't know if they've been spawning. I, I, I don't think so. I haven't noticed anything. But I do have some of their F1s that are grown out and I'm gonna work off of them once I can clear up a bigger tank for them. So down below. This tank is pretty much empty. I'm kind of preparing a few tanks for uh, one of my buddies' imports, but there's a really nice Islamus in here. Uh, six inches plus, probably six and a half at this point. Really nice to get this whole I think it's like an 80 gallon to himself uh, until someone is interested. So uh, message me if you want a really nice male as long as. Alright, moving over. Nothing in this tank. Actually, I'm going to do something with this. Um, probably based on uh, the import of a few species that I'm waiting on uh, for that to happen. Um, but uh, they'll go up there at some point, I think. Down below, just some fish being quarantined right now still. I uh, have like three 
uh, multifasciatus freddies um, that my buddy grew out. He needed to get rid of them, and then I have two red hook silver dollars in here, just in quarantine right now. And I'll move and find a different home at some point. Might even move the, the freddies since I don't think I'm gonna be able to house them long term. But anyways. I guess you can message me if you want interested in some of those. The silver dollars are probably used in my my groups. I have quite a few older ones. Moving on. So this 75 gallon here, I've been uh, moving some of the Jack Dempsey's. Uh, these guys are kind of what's left, and I might I might just keep them in here. They were in the 180 with other fish, and have a little group going on in here mixture of males and females like two males and four females or something like that so they're doing good and they, they don't skip a beat this female is a breeding dress she had fry in the pot last i checked so uh fun and i do have uh well, i did have a breeding jack dempsey pair uh shipping out monday uh, they were available. I have another one too, right around the same. They look almost identical. So if you're interested in, say, a five-inch plus Jack Dempsey pair, let me know. They breed like rabbits. Uh, down below, three ten gallons. Uh, you'll notice there's some water on the floor, and the tank in the middle uh, was dripping, and I had a bunch of water on my floor. So I had to go out to Petco, I think. Thank God had a had a ten dollar a tank ten dollar a ten gallon tank a deal so I just swapped this tank and you know used half of their water and it's a little bit dirty stuff everywhere but anyways the middle these are the Brazilianses that red population um, on the right you won't see them but there's some of those that small batch of Carpentis that I pulled I was talking about from that big, big pair and on the left uh, some new uh, Rio Gaius F1 Feste Red Terrors. Uh, smaller batch, but they're actually growing out pretty good in this because there's not that many of them, 20, 25 of them. So that's it for the 10 gallons. Go up to the top, you'll see the big guys. My pride and joy species. Big wild caught male, Rio Gaius. And that's what all the fry have been off of. This guy and his girl. Um, she's not the most colored up right now, but see if she gets into breeding dress. Maybe they can have a big spot. And this is that larger pot I was talking about. I only have one of these. It looks like I'm going to need another one for the carpet to spare. Um, this male is so big that they really needed this. At, they are in a smaller pot at one point, and then they weren't able, he wasn't able to fertilize the eggs. And then I got this bigger pot and then it solved that problem. So if you ever have that issue, try a bigger pot. Uh, on the right side, here's one of the my F1s from a wild cup pair. Uh, not the one on the left, but it's a different wild cup pair I used to keep. And uh, grew this guy out. And he's quite large at this point. He should come out and say hi, but uh, and then his female is in the back. So I just love the, the way this guy looks. He's really close to the size of this the wild cup ma uh, male on the, on the left. Big boy. All right, let's move on. Uh, this, these two tanks I don't think we covered. Um, this had that group of Colombian feste F1s that I was growing out to see if I wanted to Hold on to any in there. Unfortunately, I uh, yeah, I didn't. I think I got a little impatient and I ended up moving. Uh, I think three male and female combos. One or two were paired. Um, and then this is the last largest male right here. And I think there's a female right there. And uh, probably going to move them. Uh, I gave a promise to someone friend that I would uh, give the first shot at it, but that male looks like it might be a real stunner. Uh, look at the spangles on those fins and everything. So, I think it has really good potential, and then there's going to be that one second 
male in here that I'm going to have to move as well. Uh, these two I might hold on because they have a smaller batch that I'm still going to grow out and they might fit right in there. But the three larger in here, two males and the female are going to move at some point. So down below you'll see the F1 Rio Gaius Feste Fry. And a lot of these are right there at that one inch. Some bigger. Uh, they're available. Let me know if you're interested. Some Red Terror F1 Fry off my World Cup pair. Move around here. Another one. I end up buying two of these 10 gallons because just in case I have another seal break. Got it right there for me. Um, this th this uh, 40 breeder right now is just housing the, the Jack Dempsey male and female that's going to ship out. Um, down below this 40, I can get in close. They're scattering around as uh, some carpentis. A lot of these are three quarters of an inch to an inch plus. Um, after those bigger ones move, then these will be the next in rotation. Then we have the 90 gallon here which has the F1 uh, True Green Terrors. They're all skittish because the garage is open, so we're not going to focus on them too much. Down below, three 10 gallons. Uh, on the left, these are Islanis. Now I do red Islanis. I actually have bigger ones available right now. We'll go see those at the end. Um, middle, I have a very small batch of Cubans, and those uh, will be available down the line. Uh, not quite yet. And then on the right, we have uh, multi fossiasis, more of them. I actually have bigger ones available. We'll go see those here soon. So, got a lot cooking right now. Let's move on to some of my favorites here. All right. And uh, same old story with the multi fossiasis breeding pairs. I have two pairs divided. There's one dad. And uh, you guess there's fry in there, you would be right. You can see them swimming around right now, being all protective. See if we can focus in on the fry. Parents doing a good job of uh, protecting them. Never gets old. Such a beautiful species. Really fun, and uh, you know they stay a pretty good size too. They don't. Uh, not getting out of control large. The male, I'd say, maybe is eight, nine inches, eight inches, something like that. Very manageable, and I'm really squeezing them in this tank, but seem to be doing a good job with the pairs doing well, keeping their health good. And uh, there's a second pair on the left. I think they're hiding in the back somewhere. Um, they're probably behind this driftwood, but you've seen them plenty of times in the past, so uh, no big deal. Um, down below, these are the other Colombian red tears that I was telling you about, and they're getting uh, close to that size of those two smaller ones, so I'll probably just include them in here. And then I'll probably try to grow these out, you know, to give it another shot. Um, we're ready to see something big to convince me to hold on to a pair of those because I don't think I'm going to be doing three pairs of red tip breeding pairs of red tears since I already got the two but uh, you know the pair that comes up in here if there is one it's gonna to have to kick out one of those two bigger ones that's gonna be hard hard to do so we'll see but if, if not then uh, all you guys are gonna benefit from that because they'll pair up and I'll move them you know and uh, it's the hardest part of keeping red tears is growing them out. Being very patient, slow grower, growing species, and then pairing them off it doesn't happen at a young size. It doesn't happen quick. So, I've sort of been doing the hard work lately for people who take advantage. So, <coughs> we'll see how that goes. All right, moving around to the last of the tanks. So this is kind of new. I moved that Carpentis group over to this 180 gallon. And uh, they're just settling in right now. 
these are new and I haven't really done much of the decor, not that I ever do, but you can kind of see them. See a little female in breeding mode. And there's some really nice ones in here. Got that male, a couple males. There's actually quite a few males I would guess. Anyways, they're all doing good and I've done this before in the same size tank and you can go back and check YouTube from four or five years ago, I don't know what it was, three or four years ago maybe, where I had four breeding pairs of these guys in that five to nine inch range and they're all breeding and it was uh, got to a point where it was pretty chaotic and, and that's when I, that ended and I had to move a lot of them. And then that's where that one big pair came from. And all those were originally my fry as well. So, a long line of history. So, sorry about that. Kids running around. Next, uh, but not last, here's a Cuban pair. You can see the big male right here. Hi, Daddy. Hey, bud. And uh, and it's female. So doing really good. Really liking these guys. And uh, yeah, the fry, they're fry in that 10 gallon tank you, you saw earlier. Doing pretty good. And just one of my favorite species. It's really fun watching these guys. And they always seem to do really good as a pair. I haven't had too many Cubans males off their females knock on wood because next thing you know it's going to happen to me but been pretty fortunate with this species so their neighbors to the left there's one asalanus that i just could not get rid of and he's got that aggression just like that other one that i showed you guys earlier that was available it looks basically like him and so much fun Look how pretty that that fish is. Yeah, I'm gonna hold on to this guy sort of like a mascot right now. I don't even I don't even keep it a female for him, but I have plenty of fry, slanus fry, and the ones I have the first batch is off of this guy. So that was back when he was in that community. So if you're interested in any of the fry. It's a really fun species. Really fun and beautiful species. Alright. Down below. Not a whole lot to see. These are the multifasciatus, the Freddy Fry. that are available. Let me know if you're interested. And moving around here. Another batch of F1. Real guys, fast day. Those ones you saw in the 10 gallon, sorry, I think I might have spoke. Those weren't the youngest ones. These are actually the youngest ones. So many batches, I forget about them. Uh, these ones probably are three weeks, three weeks old, two, three weeks. And uh, doing pretty good on that baby brine shrimp. But gotta have them ready after the older batches are gone. And then here's the uh, Redislanus fry that are available. And some of these are always going to have standouts. And there's, there's a couple standouts here that are like an inch and a half. And so I uh, really like to move those. And I always try to move those first. So I haven't shipped any of these yet. This will be the first available notice. So uh, first order, first person who puts those in is going to get the, the biggest ones in here. So let me know. All right, guys, that's about it. Outside, which I behind that fence back there is the uh, in the 300 gallon is are the uh, Geophagus brasiliensis group that I uh, I don't do a whole lot of updates on them. Sometimes I show them from the top, but you know there's no viewing window, so I don't really uh, show them too much. But they're doing really good outside, and I caught that spawn months ago and that's why I have some of their fry so anyways that about wraps it up
Let me know if you have any questions. Please like the video if you do. It really helps me and uh, sub to the channel. Until next time, take care.